Welcome back YouTubers and thanks for sticking with me for another watch review from Wenger Todd's Watch Shop. Today I'm going to review another Wenger watch, this time from their Urban Classic line of watches. This line was first introduced in April of 2014 to capture the young urban professional. It's a classy yet functional watch that goes well with casual and business attire. Wenger produced a promotional video to advertise this new line of watches. It shows a group of young professionals going about their business in downtown Zurich and I've included a link to this video in the details section of my video below. It starts off slow, but I have to admit there's a pretty awesome bass solo throughout most of the video. And then they start playing with some saxophone and start sounding like, I don't know, something else entirely. I'm not gonna discuss that on this channel because it's not a family friendly topic. But before I go any further, I'd like to provide a history of the company. Now, if you've already seen this video, you can click the link below to skip ahead. Technically pronounced Wenger, the company dates back to the late 1800s. The company got its start in Switzerland in the canton of Jura. This region is overlooked by the Jura Mountains and famous for a number of watchmakers whose names are too many to list. The company's first line of products include industrial cutlery and butcher equipment. Technically known as Paul Bouchet and C, the company would become known as Wenger after Theodore Wenger, a minister who'd served in the U.S. military, returned to Switzerland and joined Paul Bouchet. They quickly worked to produce a new pocket knife supporting a government contract for the Swiss Army. This contract was split with the company Victorinox, thus beginning the long relationship with the company. For nearly 80 years, Victorinox and Wenger both produced Swiss Army knives. Wenger began production of watches in 1988, a year earlier than Victorinox. Things looked promising for both companies, but they were both hit hard in the aftermath of the 9-11 attacks. New airline rules outlined the use of pocket knives, which were common among passengers. Eventually, this took its toll on Wenger, and the company was saved from bankruptcy only when Victorinox purchased them. Eventually, Victorinox became the sole producer of the Swiss Army knife, while, com while both companies continued to produce watches under separate names. While the Wenger brand is known for, as an entry-level watch, that's not to say that they haven't produced their share of quality watches. Their most famous high-level watch is the GST Classic, which was a mechanical watch powered by the famous Valjou 7750 27-joule movement. This watch retailed for over 10,000 US dollars. The watch is extremely rare and came in at every conceivable complication you could imagine, to include moon phase, day date, and month, second time zone, and chronograph. Wenger is truly an underrated brand, and I really cannot emphasize this enough. They produce watches that range from 100 in today's US dollars all the way to 2000 for their high-end watches. Most of the watches I will review from this company will be in the sub-500 range. For the price point, you absolutely get a substantial value, and this watch is no exception. All right, let's get started. Now, the one thing I failed to mention during my last video, Wenger has a product code, you can see it right here. And they use this to identify the make, model, and style of the watch. The first number, the dot, the zero, one dot. Now, that actually indicates that it's a, uh, a watch for, for males. Now, if you're looking up a female watch, a uh, watch for ladies, that simply just gets left off and you only see the second and third. So the second number represents the make and model of the watch. Uh, this typically means, so for example, Men's Urban Classic, uh, and it identifies whether or not it's a chronograph, uh, and, so, and stuff like that. The uh, third number actually represents sort of the, the combination of styles and colors. So in this case, the 107 designates that it's uh, rose gold, and it uh, uh, comes with a leather strap, <clears throat> and, um, and that's about it. So if you're looking for a watch... Uh, and you want something specific, just remember that this number has to be accurate if you're searching for it on eBay or Amazon, otherwise um, it's not going to be correct. So as you open the box, you'll notice the quality of the packaging is nice. Um, it's, it's not as nice, it's, it's decent, but it's not as nice as, uh, as what you would have seen in my, uh, my Seaforce watch, which was clearly much nicer. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that the Seaforce is significantly better of a watch. Uh, it is a more expensive watch, of course, and this line is a, a little bit less expensive. Uh, the difference is this packaging is typically what you get if you're to if you're to purchase online or you get through 
uh, sort of a box retailer like Costco or something like that. Um, they have a much nicer, it almost looks like a, a crate, if you will. Uh, I'll put a picture up if, uh, if I can find one. And that's typically what Wenger, uh, Wenger sorry, will sell to you if uh, you're purchasing from an authorized retailer, like at a jewelry store or something like that. Now, um, full disclosure, I've actually, uh, I've actually worn this watch before many times, so this is obviously the first time I've opened it. Um, I'm surprised I even had the packaging, but I just put it in here for the sake of, of the unboxing. You can see the original uh, code, the, the original price tag of $295. Now that's still a pretty common price that uh, you'll find. The difference is, of course, is uh, that you can, you can usually get a better deal. Um, this particular one, the rose gold is a little bit more expensive. Uh, and it, it, in my opinion, it does look nicer. I think this is probably one of the best combinations of colors. Uh, this particular uh, model, I think I paid about eighty dollars, but I really had to, uh, I really had to look around for it. Um, I think I ended up getting it on eBay, and it was a watch shop that was going out of business and liquidating their their prices, and I negotiated separately. Um, generally, uh, this model, uh, which you can still find brand new, they still sell it. It's an active model. You can buy it from their retail store on. Uh, on certain sales days, you can get it for about $180, but you should be able to get it for about $120. Um, so one of the things you'll notice, and I'll, I'll pull this out, it sits on a little foam pad. Again, this is just the generic packaging. Uh, it also comes with this gigantic user manual. Now, every uh, Wenger watch comes with a three-year warranty, which is kind of neat. None of this is filled out, because uh, so <laughs> I don't even know if I can actually get it. Um, because I got it from eBay, but this has uh, several different watch models in several different languages. It's 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 pretty massive. Um, if I can find the the link to this online, I will put this in in the details section below. I'll move this up to the side. But before I get into this watch, uh, I'd like to to talk about the movement. It uses a Ronda Z60 Swiss movement. Um, I think it's important just to to know what's in your watch. Um, and not just wear it. So um, if you've already seen um, this this before in some of my other videos, you can go ahead and skip ahead. Uh, otherwise, uh, I'll go into some more detail about that. The Wenger Urban Classic Chronograph uses the Ronda Z60 movement. This is a no jewel quality rebuildable quartz movement. The non-chronograph version of this watch uses a different movement, also made by Ronda. There are technically two versions of this movement, the Swiss parts version and the Swiss made version. The Swiss parts version is typically used in the lower cost quartz watches and sold to other manufacturers such as Invicta and several others. The Swiss made version of this watch is assembled and tested in-house. This typically gives the watch a slightly higher accuracy as Ronda is performing the assembly directly. Unlike the Ronda 5030D, there is no distinguishing difference between the two style of movements. Both movements are unfinished steel, some with a plastic cover and others without. Both are zero joule movements. The movement uses a Type 395 battery which produces 1.5 volts. The movement also has a hacking feature which allows the crown to be pulled to the second position, allowing for reduced power consumption. Typical battery life for this movement is slightly less than the improved 5030D, with a reserve of 50 months compared to 54 months. All right, let's get started. Uh, like I did in my last video, I'm wearing these uh, finger protectors. These are nice to uh, help prevent uh, fingerprinting on the watch. It just makes the video a little bit better. Uh, and I also use these uh, for, for watch repair and, and movement repair. It's much easier to hold and you don't lose, you don't lose screws, they don't go flying off. Um, so first thing we'll do is I'll just pull it out of here. I've already uh, unbuckled it. Uh, first thing you'll notice is it's a, it's a solid case, uh, stainless steel with rose gold, rose gold finish. Um, I'll go ahead and measure it. I believe it's 44 millimeters, but we can verify that right now. Yep, 44, I got it right. Yep, 44 millimeters. Uh, I I really like this watch in particular because I, I sort of like the contrast that you see between the charcoal charcoal face. You can see sort of a almost a guilloche type 
type design. Not not exactly, but sort of a wave pattern, uh, and it contrasts nicely with the with the rose gold gold finish. You can see there's a polished polished finish around the the bezel, and sort of just a, a brushed look. Uh, the buttons, of course, are uh, the buttons and crowns <clears throat> are are in fact polished. The the case is chiseled from a single piece, uh, just like the case, uh, I'm sorry, the, the case back is chiseled from a single piece, just like the case is. Uh, it's laser etched. And uh, one thing worth, worth note, noting also on these uh, Wenger watches is that, that they almost always come with sapphire coated crystals. Now really expensive watches typically come with a sapphire glass. In this case, it's still a mineral crystal, but it has three layers of sapphire and really helps uh, sort of protect the watch. Now, this is uh, what you would typically call a sort of a light diver or a skin diver watch. This uh, supports 10 atmospheres uh, pressure, so 100 meter, 100 meter uh, diving distance. Uh, it's good for snorkeling. Uh, I've used this at the gym and the pool, uh, and so I've showered with it, and it works quite well. What's really nice is, although this is not a screw down case, uh, screw down crown, it does have two O-ring gaskets, one in the back, and then one is somewhere in the middle uh, on the shaft, and that helps seal it pretty well. It has a tachyometer uh, inner trim ring. <clears throat> you can see the uh, the second hand is actually a sub-second, uh, and that operates separately, and this large hand is for the chronograph. So when you hit it, uh, it begins to count 30 minutes uh, on, on the sub-dial there, and that dial, of course, also maintains uh, the uh, the day as well as the date. Um, this is start, of course, and this is stop. And you can see, and then I can reset it. Uh, and I can also reset it by pulling out the crown, which I'll show you. So now this, what's nice about this too, is it also has a hacking feature. And the hacking feature, when you pull it out, um, it, it prevents it prevents the second hand from, from operating. And that gives it a longer life. And of course, you do have to reset it. And you are introducing uh, it's still sealed of course by by the shaft but uh it's it's not it's not pulling power from from the battery as much as it would if it was actually gone in gone in there and you can sort of adjust the time and and i can adjust the the dates so it, it's it's actually very nice I, I i really do like this watch i i think it looks great for something that you're uh, just casual wear as well as in the office it, it looks really good in person um course Swiss made and I meant I already talked about the movement now one thing worth noting is that this this strap in particular this strap is actually a waterproof strap uh, I bought it afterwards and I'll show you the originals the originals are nice it's it's genuine leather uh, 22 millimeter lug of course um, you can see it's got the Swiss logo they are nice uh, I'm not I'm certainly not saying that they're not but I'm just not particularly a fan of it uh, I like usually to get my own strap in this case it, it doesn't uh, it's not waterproof, so it didn't really make a lot of sense to me. I like wearing the watches for what they're intended for. And this one's actually very nice. It's it's canvas on the top. It is leather on the bottom, but it is it is waterproof. And I just simply put the lug the lug on here, and it looks, looks really nice. Uh, one more thing that I'll do is I'll shut the light off so you can get a, a good loom shot. You can see that it works quite well. So if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Please leave a comment below for any other watches you would like to see reviewed. I typically do them in the sub 500 range because I'm not made of money and it makes it a little bit easier and uh, I just enjoy those more. All right, any questions? That's it, thank you.